Hello to all. Today we are going to discuss about a very important concept of the plant physiology and that is known as the plasmolysis. Now before starting the plasmolysis, you must know that what happens when a cell is kept in pure water. So I have drawn a diagram here and when a cell is kept in the pure water, what happens? The water from the external medium enter into the cell and due to which the volume of the cytoplasm is increased, the cell becomes turgid and the pressure is imposed by the cytoplasm on the wall and that is known as the turgor pressure or the TP. And in turn, in the case of the plant cell, there is equal and opposite pressure applied by the cell wall on the cytoplasm and that pressure is called as the wall pressure and the TP is equal to WP. This is the case when the cell is kept in the pure water. Now the plasmolysis case is totally different. Here the cell is not kept in the hypotonic solution or we can say that the cell is not kept in the pure water. Here in the case of the plasmolysis, the cell is kept in a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution means a highly concentrated solution. It may be the solution of the salt or it may be the solution of the sugar. So what happens when a cell is kept in the hypertonic solution? So when a cell is kept in hypertonic solution, what happens? Exosmosis occur and the water comes out from the cell and protoplasm is shrinked and this entire process is called as the plasmolysis. So here I have written the definition that if a plant cell, we are talking strictly about the plant cell just now. Now if a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, in a highly concentrated solution, what happens? The water molecules will be diffused out from the cell. Here you can see, right? That water molecules will be diffused out from the cell as a result of the exosmosis. As a result of the exosmosis, the protoplasm of the cell, the protoplasm of the cell will be detached from the cell wall and it starts shrinking and come at the center and this entire phenomenon is called as the plasmolysis. Means when a cell is kept in hypertonic solution, exosmosis occur, water comes out and protoplasm separates from the wall and shrinks and come at the center. This is called as the plasmolysis phenomenon. Okay. Now, uh, this plasmolysis phenomenon is not so simple. Basically, the phenomenon of the plasmolysis is completed in three steps. Okay, the very first step is the limiting plasmolysis. The second step is the incipient plasmolysis and the third step is the evident plasmolysis. Okay, so the very first step, which is known as the first step of the plasmolysis, that is known as the limiting plasmolysis. Very first, I want to tell you before starting the limiting plasmolysis, that here the protoplasm will not shrink. Here no protoplasm shrinkage occurs. Here there is reduction in the size of the vacuole. Here there is reduction in the size of the vacuole and here there is reduction in the cell volume. Okay, But there is no reduction or no shrinkage in the protoplasm. Okay, Now what happens here? Basically what happens? So here there is reduction in 25% of the cell volume. Here there is reduction of 25% of the cell volume. So what happens when a cell is capped or placed in a hypertonic solution, the volume of the cell reduces due to shrinking of the cell. The volume of the cell reduces because of the shrinking of the cell. Why? Because some amount of the water of cell set, some amount of water of cell set which is found in the vacuole diffuses out gradually through the process of the exosmosis and due to which what happens that turgor pressure decreases as water is not entering, water is coming out so the TP is decreased and it is so much decreased that it becomes zero by which what happens the cell wall is not pushed by the protoplasm, no doubt at all, the shrinking of the cell is happening. But here the cell wall is not pushed by the protoplasm so that the shrinking cell wall reduces in the total volume of the cell. 
total volume of the cell is increased but protoplasm is not separated from the cell wall and this situation is called as the first stage of the plasmolysis or we can say it as limiting plasmolysis so altogether in nutshell i can say there is reduction in the size of cell there is reduction in the size of the vacuole right here the here there is 25% reduction in the volume of the cell but there is no shrinkage of the protoplasm here gradual exo exosmosis occur and tp is reduced to zero okay now you can see here that the size of the vacuole has been reduced the size of the vacuole has been reduced okay now coming to the second one known as the incipient plasmolysis incipient means the initial plasmolysis it is the starting of the plasmolysis and it is also called as the concave plasmolysis it is also called as the concave plasmolysis i have drawn the diagram also if the diffusion of water to outside continue by the exosmosis here the water has started coming out gradually in the limiting plasmolysis and if the exosmosis continue here also or if the diffusion of the water from inside to outside continues through the exosmosis then what happens the central vacuole contracts the central vacuole contracts and with this what happens protoplasm also shrink the central vacuole contracts and with this what happens the protoplasm also shrink and the shrinkage very first start from the corners the shrinkage very first starts from the corners the shrinkage starts from the corners and but the protoplasm is not fully shrinked here it is still you can see that it is still attached to the wall with the help of some protoplasmic fibers or we can say it is the plasmodesmata or we can say it is the hash check fibers okay so wall is not but cell wall is not contracting here cell wall is not contracting here in this case the cell wall was contracted here the cell wall is not contracting but the protoplasm seems to detach from the corners of the cell wall but it is still attached with the help of some uh, fibers right uh, known as the protoplasmic fibers or the plasmodesmata or the hash check fibers okay and in this case the tp of the cell decreases and it decreases here the tp was reduced and the value became to be zero now the what is the value below the zero below the zero value is the negative so here we can say that the tp is negative and we know very well in my previous videos also you have seen that tp of a plasmolysis cell is always negative here the tp was zero not negative because here there was no shrinkage of the protoplasm but here as the protoplasm is shrinked so the tp become negative always remember tp or the sign p that is known as the pressure potential is always negative in the case of the plasmolysis cell so in the incipient plasmolysis you can see that protoplasm has started shrinking has started separating from the cell wall but it is still attached with the cell wall okay so this is what incipient plasmolysis now this incipient plasmolysis is also called as the concave plasmolysis okay and evident plasmolysis evident plasmolysis is the final plasmolysis or we can say that it is the clear cut plasmolysis here you will be able to see the complete shrinkage of the protoplasm and it is also called as the convex plasmolysis the shrinking of the plasmolysis is continuous here here the protoplasm was not shrinked here the shrinkage of the protoplasm was started but was not completed here the shrinkage of the protoplasm is continuous due to continuous due to continuous diffusion of the water from inside to outside that is exosmosis the protoplasm detaches from the cell wall and assume a spherical shape the protoplasm separates from the cell wall and it assumes the spherical shape and it is present at the center and this is known as the evident plasmolysis always remember what happens due to the complete shrinkage of the protoplasm this is the protoplasm and this is the wall okay so what happens that that the hypertonic solution which was which was in the outer medium in which the cell was kept what happens that hypertonic solution is now filled in between the cell wall and the protoplasm this is what 
this is the protoplasm and this is the cell wall so in between the cell wall and the protoplasm what is filled the hypertonic solution is filled because cell wall is permeable so from the outer medium the hypertonic solution will enter into the cell and this hypertonic solution will actually surround this protoplasm and will give protection to this protoplasm for a long time and that's why we see that many jam jellies and murabbas can be stored or preserved for a long time when they are kept in the hypertonic solution and here in the case of the evident plasmolysis you can see that tp become more negative so here the tp was zero here the tp has became negative and here the tp has became more negative and always remember if the cell is actually remaining for a long time in the evident plasmolysis so what will happen it will die means a cell cannot remain alive a cell cannot remain alive for a long time if it is actually kept in the hypertonic stage okay means we can say that a plasmolysed cell cannot remain alive for a long time it will die okay so these were the three steps of the plasmolysis limiting incipient and evident now you must also know about the significance of the plasmolysis that what is the significance of this plasmolysis because it is a biological phenomenon and has certain significances okay so we are now talking about the significance of plasmolysis so here it is significance significance of plasmolysis now what is the chief significance that we can differentiate we can differentiate we can differentiate between a living cell a living cell and a dead cell by plasmolysis why because 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 plasmolysis always occur plasmolysis always occur in living cell only so we can differentiate between a living cell and a dead cell now we can also use the phenomenon of the plasmolysis right in the case of the bacteria and all okay see here that the pickles pickles are kept pickles are kept in high salt condition so that bacteria can not grow in it bacteria cannot grow in it and it can be preserved for long time okay always the salt concentration in the pickles is kept high because the bacteria cannot survive under high concentration of the salt and this phenomenon is used to preserve the pickles for the long time okay in the indian tradition in the indian tradition the pickles are actually kept in the march or the april season during the mango season and they last up to the next season means they are preserved for at least one year okay so this is used now high salt concentration high salt concentration high salt concentration is used to preserve is used to preserve preserve jam jellies jam jellies etc okay we can we can also know the op of a cell by using phenomenon of by using phenomenon of plasmolysis 
okay so these are the major phenomena or the significances of the plasmolysis and at last you must also know about that what is deep plasmolysis it is just opposite to it is just opposite to the plasmolysis what happens when a plasmolysis cell when a plasmolysed cell when a plasmolysed cell is kept in is kept in is kept in hypotonic solution that is pure water that is pure water the plasmolysed cell again come back in its original come back in its original state and swells this phenomenon this phenomenon is called as de plasmo lysis which is just opposite to the plasmolysis okay so when a plasmolysed cell now remember one thing that a plasmolysed cell if it is kept immediately in the hypotonic solution then only it will come back in its original state but if the plasmolysed cell is kept for a long time in that hypotonic solution then if you want to again deplasmolyze the cell it will be not possible so when a plasmolysed cell is kept in hypotonic solution that is in pure water the plasmolysed cell again come back in its original state it regains its shape and swells this phenomenon is called as a deplasmolysis so dear student this was the complete video based on the plasmolysis we have talked about the plasmolysis definition we have talked about the three steps of the plasmolysis that is the limiting plasmolysis right the incipient plasmolysis and the evident plasmolysis and the significance of the plasmolysis also and at last the deplasmolysis also it is very important for the examination point of view keep watching my videos will be coming soon with few more videos based on the plant physiology thanks a lot for viewing